Hi guys, welcome back to TNT Tea Time with Tina. I hope you're having a beautiful, blessed, wonderful, fantastic day. Oh man, I'm so glad to be back. It's been a while. Um, I want to get back to recording and putting videos out for you guys. You know, I've just been just dealing with some things, but I'll be okay. For the most part, I'll be all right. Anyway, I'm drinking green tea today, probiotic. So if you don't have a cup of tea, grab a cup of tea and sip tea with me and have lunch with me. Also, I'm having uh, West Coast tacos. It's a burrito bowl, actually, if y'all can see this. Let me see if I can put the bowl up a little closer. Yeah, so it's a carne asada burrito bowl. So it's got some, let me see if I can tilt this. It's got some carne asada, some pico de gallo, guacamole, lettuce, uh, refried beans, and some cheese. I just don't get the rice that comes in the bowl, and I don't really like black beans much. So... I just got, yeah, this is how I make, how I get my burrito bowl. So it's just, it's just more protein and less carbs. And I also like a little crunch. So I just usually go open my bag of chips that I have in the house and I'll just take out like five, which I have about here one. Yeah, I have about five chips. I just kind of count them out. So I try not to get too many chips at once if I can. I think the hardest part is when I go to like a restaurant, but when I'm home, I try to, you know, control myself a little bit better. Oh, and I have ice to drink. I have strawberry watermelon. This is so, so, so good. If y'all haven't tried it, you should try some. It's amazing. And I have some salsa. Uh, what is this? Um, salsa verde and then just like a tomato salsa. Mild because I don't do too much spicy. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get a prayer. And then uh, we can get started with the meal and just chit chat. Lord, thank you for the food I'm about to receive and nourish my body for Christ's sake. In Jesus' name, and bless the hands that prepared this meal. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be grateful for your <laughs> blessing because some people aren't as fortunate as we are, you know? But anyway, um, so let me see where I'm going to go with this. So I like a lot of salsa and salsa verde. I really do. I'm just like a big. So I, I usually just pour a good amount of salsa on it. I love these burrito bowls and usually I can have it's so much I usually can have it for like for dinner too so I'll just eat probably half of it right now and then I'll just have the rest later but I like a lot of salsa so yeah I usually just pour some on top like this and I got this from West Coast Tacos where I live so I'm not sure if you guys have a West Coast Taco near your town but they are amazing y'all they're so good so yeah so let's see Go ahead and try some. I should have got a bigger uh, fork. But let's see. Y'all can see? Can y'all see that? Closer to the camera. Hope y'all can see it. So good. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm, mm, -mm, -mm, -mm y'all. Mm. 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 It's so satisfying. It's like, you don't even miss having a big burrito, you know, in the shell when you get it like this. Completely satisfied. <laughs> I'll just get a couple bites, y'all, and I'm gonna talk a little bit. Hope you all are doing wonderful. Hope you've been just doing great, blessed. I just hope everything in your life is going smooth and less stress as possible. You know, I hope so for you guys, because life can get tough. <laughs> it can get tough. Sometimes overwhelming, you know. Mmm. Mmm. Positivity is key, though. You got to fight through all that negativity and just try to keep your mind as positive as possible. I remember I asked my doctor, because if you're watching my channel, you're probably familiar with my my backstory. And um, let me get a sip of tea first, y'all, real quick. Mm. So good. I remember um, asking my doctor, my nephrologist, which is my kidney doctor. And I remember asking him, 
what can I do to slow down the process of it getting worse? Eventually, I'll need another kidney. You guys are probably already familiar with that, but um, I asked him, like, what can I do to, to try to slow down the process and try to, you know, um, stay as healthy as possible? The first thing he told me was eliminate as much stress out of your life as possible. He says stress is like the number one factor in causing things to go wrong in our body. I don't think we realize how much damage stress does to us. It, it's like so many things we probably could avoid in our body from happening if we just try to minimize our stress, you know? Mm. Sometimes, I know it's easier said than done because life is just life, you know, sometimes it gets hard, so. But I think if we try to just stay as positive as we can through, through all our adversities, you know, everything that we go through, if we can just try to see some type of light at the end of the tunnel, it'll help us a lot, you know, in the long run. I wanted to talk to those other survivors like myself how I, I I love the word survivor. Like it's probably like one, it's one of my top words that I like to stay at the top of my, my mind. You know, I like to, I, I constantly like to remind myself survivors come in all different. I mean, it's so many different survivors in the world. I mean, that being a survivor, overcoming something that could have taken you out or destroyed you is everything. I've been following stories about domestic um, violence. A lot of us, one time or another, have experienced some form of, you know, domestic uh, violence. And um, so being a survivor of that, I mean, pat yourself on the back because you got through something that could have potentially ended your life or, you know, taking you out. You know what I mean? So other cancer survivors. You know, Fanconi syndrome survivors, kidney, uh, kidney disease survivors, and liver, lungs. I mean, any any form of illness, MS, you know, all type of, I mean, I could just keep naming it, but um, the fact that you survived something that could have potentially taken your life, it, it, it's, you don't even realize, I don't even think I realize sometimes how blessed I am or how blessed we are. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Being a survivor is a big, big, big deal. And um, it's not a day that goes by that I don't thank God that he spared me because I, I, I really feel like had I not dealt with those cancers and not dealt with this Fanconi and all the things that come along with just having Fanconi syndrome by itself, I honestly don't think I'd be who I am today. I, I've always had a big heart. Always, I've always cared about people, always loved people, but I think I wouldn't be the person that I am. I think I'm one of those people that I, I'm humble and I value everything about life. You know, like, it's like we all have to do that. It's like, because I think when we hear the word cancer, and even for myself, when I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, you automatically think your life is over. You're not going to make it. It's, it's, it's over, but we are survivors. We're survivors. When you when you have had cancer before in your life, obviously we know that the chances of cancer returning in another part of the body is more common for us than it is for someone else who, who's never had cancer. That's pretty obvious, but the fact that um, we, we have this, this horrible disease and we have overcome it. You know what I mean? So I think we really have to celebrate the word survivor, just celebrate it and just know what it means to be a survivor. What it, what does it mean? I don't even know if we celebrate that word enough. You y'all feel what I'm saying? I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. I'm just one of those real I'm just a let me see, I'm just very passionate about things especially when it's something that's impact, impacted my life the way it has. I literally, and, and you know what's crazy? A lot of us who've had cancers or sicknesses and stuff like that have had surgeries. And so every time for me, you know, for me, uh, 
for instance, every time I um like get dressed, shower every day, whatever, I have a constant reminder. I I I can't miss the scars, you know. And some women or men have scars that are prop worse than mine, you know. It's like everybody always has a, a different story than yours and sometimes much worse than yours. So it's like we, we, some of us feel like our life is so bad and we just can't deal with certain things and it's just too hard and it's, how can I do this? I want to give up. But what we have to realize, and I constantly remind myself, I'm sorry I'm not eating a lot because I'm, I'm just passionate about what I'm saying, but I constantly remind myself and I try to remind others around me that there's always somebody in a worse situation than we are. Always. So, and I'm not saying that, that that's a good thing because it's not a good thing, but sometimes when you realize life isn't as bad as, excuse me, your life isn't as bad as you think it is, sometimes it kind of lightens the load a little bit. It makes you feel like, okay, I can, I can get through this because that person over there is in a much worse situation than I am. My situation isn't even, isn't even that bad now that I'm thinking about it, you know? People ask me sometimes, like, how do you do it? How are you so strong? How do you overcome this? How do you deal with this? How do you live with this? You know, having cancers and living with, find out I have Fanconi at such a late age and all the suffering that I went through my whole life. Like, how are you so strong? When I had my last surgery, I literally laid on that table. And and, and when I say table, I mean, I mean like, I, before I went into the operation room, I was like on a little bed thing. And I... And I lay and I was laying there and I said, something in my mind was saying that I wasn't gonna come out of this, that this is it. You know, I didn't say that to my family, I didn't tell anybody, but I was just feeling like it was just not, I was just, I just wasn't gonna make it. And I don't know why I was feeling like that. Maybe that was just the enemy trying to get in my head to scare me. But once I woke up and I kept asking the nurse over and over and over, like, am I here? Am I alive? And I kept grabbing her, trying to, you know, just touch, just, just to feel a, a body, to know I was a lot, you know, I was still in the flesh, you know. And she said, something happened to you over there because you, once I came back, you know, off, off anesthesia, she said, you just kept asking me, um, were, what was, was, were you real? Are, am I, am I alive? Can I touch you? Just, you know, just touch my hand. Just, it's almost like I, something happened to me. Like, I don't know, but I feel like, uh. And once I realized that I made it back and, I, and I'm still here, I think it just changed my whole mindset of life. And it made me realize I have a, a mission. I have a story. I have a testimony that I have to get out here to people because I want people that feel lost and hopeless. I want them to know that they're not by themselves and you can get through it. You can. Even though it seems like it's impossible, it seems like, how am I going to do this? It seems like and sometimes you feel like you're alone, like nobody else understands. But just know you're not. You know, you're not by yourself. There are millions of people, thousands of people in the exact same shoes as you are. So just know you're not alone and know you can do it. You can do it. And also know that if you if you are still in the flesh, you are still here, obviously listen to me talk, then you have a purpose. I always say that too. I always say, you know what, when, when your time is up on this earth, because only God knows when that time is going to be, then you're, then whatever you were here to do, is done right so if you're still here then that means you you have work to do and i know for me i i i'm i'm really my heart is in this youtube my heart is in social media trying to get my story out here trying to help and save lives and just just help people to motivate people to inspire people it's in me but y'all sometimes me just doing simple things can get very challenging. And anybody who has Fanconi syndrome or has is, is working with one kidney that's barely functioning, I think the body just gets really tired and drained a lot faster. And uh, the pains are sometimes unbearable. And then it's a mental thing as well. So you really have to stay, um, you really have to stay mentally uh, grounded because it can get the best of you sometimes. You know, sometimes it gets really overwhelming. And, uh, yeah, um, I, I would I would even say like if I go for like a long walk or something, then like just to exercise, the walking while I'm doing it I can manage. But then the next day or two, I'm gonna say about three days. The next three days after, 
my legs and stuff hurt so bad. It's hard for me just to move around. Like I literally just to walk from one room to the other. It's like, ah, ah, it's like something happens. I don't know what that's about, but, um, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of things come along with just being, having illness, you know what I mean? So, but it's okay. I literally have not eaten much y'all. I've been talking and talking and talking probably cause I ain't been here in a while on a video. And I feel like I just have so much to say. I feel like somebody needs to hear this. I feel like somebody needs to understand that um, you will and can get through it. I hope that you have faith. I hope, I, I, you know, I, I said when I started this channel, I don't want to be pushing my religion on people. I don't want to be pushing, you know, um, I don't want to be forceful with, with my faith and belief and religion. But at the same time, um, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to to preach his word. He wants us to reach others. He wants us to bring others to him. So um, through our testimonies and our our triumphs and our, you know, our obstacles and that, that we can share that we've overcome, then through that, somebody else can can learn and maybe, you know, and, and, and maybe even if they haven't fi uh, had those things happen to them yet and they do one day, they can always think back like, okay, I remember that one lady saying this and this and this and, you know, just knowing that just hearing that 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 you got this you know just hearing that you can do it god's got us that's the number one thing i always have to tell myself is god's got us it's this song by Dwayne Dwayne wood that i listen to all the time and it's called let go let god and when i tell y'all that song brings me from any type of depression sadness anything that i'm in i listen to that and it literally takes it away because i know that god is going to take any of my burdens and my pain away. I just have to give it to him. I can't try to figure it out in the flesh because we just won't. We just can't. There's things that we're just not meant to do. And when we get overwhelmed with life and just pain and sickness and just just the stresses that come in this world, you know, people, just everything, we have to know how to just give it to God because he's going to fight our battles for us, you know, and that's where I'm at with just life and just trying to understand this whole thing, not knowing when I'm going to need a transplant. I know it's coming. I know my kidney isn't getting any better. And it, um, I'm still going to the urologist. They still check me like my lungs and um, uh, they do a, what is it? A X-rays and um, MRIs and stuff like that, because they have to keep an eye on my body, you know, to make sure that there's no other cancer coming back. You know, once you have cancer, you have, so many years that you have to continue to be tested to make sure that it doesn't come back. So, you know, I just hit three years this past year. So I have two more years that I have to keep, you know, be a monitor. They do it for up to five years. And then just to make sure that, you know, everything's clear. So um, I'm still doing that. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to give you guys a little update on everything with my health. Um, yeah. That's pretty much where I stand with that. It's just like, um, I don't like to say it's a waiting game because I don't focus on it like that. I try, I, I don't really sit here and think about, oh, well, what's going to happen next week? What's going to happen tomorrow? I just kind of take it day by day, let God lead me and not worry and know that whenever that time comes, he's got me and he's got my donor. <laughs> he's got my donor. Um, so yeah, guys, um, Whew, I feel like I just been rumbling and rumbling and rumbling. Uh, I definitely want to do more videos. I have a, a couple of videos that I've done. Like I have a food video that I'm updating me and my family where we had like a seafood like thing, little boil thing, and it was it was so much fun. So I want to update, um, excuse me, upload that video. And then I have a video. I got a couple of videos that I'm gonna start that that actually already have done that I need to just get edited so I can get put out for y'all. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you guys for all your support. Um just all the beautiful people out there. Sometimes you need, and I'm not saying sometimes all the time, you need somebody to just vent and talk to. And, you know, hopefully they can understand or they try to understand. You know, I, I like to put myself in other people's shoes. I can't always understand your, your story or your testimony if I haven't walked it clearly, but I do like to try to listen and try to gain some type of knowledge on what you're going through and, and try to be there for people. You know, that's the best thing we can do is people just be there for each other, love each other, sh share kindness and, you know, and just, I don't know, just share the blessings of this life, you know, cause it's, people are dropping y'all. I mean, people are, I mean, people are leaving right and left. So we really have to be mindful and be cautious of the, how we move and how we do things and how we interact and how we treat people because, 
tomorrow is not promised. So every day that I wake up, I'm just like, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I, there's not a day, and God is my witness as he hears me do this video right now. I don't wait. It's, there, there's not a day, excuse me, that I don't wake up and thank him for allowing me another day. As soon as my eyes open up, I'm like, okay, I made it. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, every single day. So just be thankful. Remember to be thankful. And yeah, y'all. I tell you, when you've, been, when you've been through some stuff, I think certain things happen to us for reasons like this. God wants us and he wants to bring us close to him. And, you know, sometimes life lessons will, will make us be the people that he knew we were meant to be all along. We just didn't know it. Anyway, y'all. Thank you for tuning in with Tea Time with Tina. I'm sorry I didn't eat much. I've just been talking and talking and talking. I would definitely eat some more off camera. Um, I just had so much to say because I haven't put out a video in a long time. And it, it's been a lot. It's been on my mind to talk about being a survivor. And um, and just shout out to all you survivors out there. Hey, like praying hands to all of us. And we are so thankful as a survivor. It's my survivor family. Thank you, God. Thank you, God that we survived and please continue to allow us to be survivors God in Jesus name amen I love y'all thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in my next video be blessed y'all bye bye